Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films. Today we're talking about Ravens fifth round rookie, Dalen Hayes. And to join me again, second part of our edge rushers, is Randy. You see his Twitter handle right there. How you doing, Randy? I'm good. Thanks for having me again, man. Appreciate it. That's really good. Well, let's jump right into it this time. Um, we went over Adafi away in the last video. Let's talk about Hayes this time. What's your what's your feel for him? What do you get off the scouting report that you first of all start about things that you like about him? Sure. So the first thing I like is that he's the uh, the Freddie Solomon Community Award winner, which is the equivalent of the uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Uh, so high character, uh, very active in the community, hard worker. Um, so that's a plus. You know, that's that's someone that seems like he'll play like a Raven um, through the whistle, effort, high energy. Uh, he only played eight games in high school due to injuries. Um, he missed of a lot of the 2019 season. So uh, we would like to for him to stay a little a little bit more healthy as far as, you know, staying on the field avail availability. Uh, I think he'll be a better uh, professional outside linebacker than he was at Notre Dame. Once again, just like Dalen Hay, I mean, just like uh, Odafe, you know, his role was pretty much cut cut you know straight cut straight forward sorry and you know he he didn't he didn't play a lot in the flats and stuff but whenever he went to whenever he covered the flats he moved really well and you notice Ty's Bowser said he reminds him of uh you know um Hayes reminds him of, of himself and that's because he's the same body type you know about 6'3 260 uh can show the ability to do everything at an above average level doesn't do anything really well, but just as a solid uh, contributor. I think besides the guy the Browns took, uh, Jeremiah, I forgot his um, Wusha name. Karamoa, yes. Wusha Karamoa. But besides him, PFF rated him the, si the second highest on the defense. And like we were talking about in the other episode, like, you know, they had – this is another team like Penn State who had really good players before he came. So it makes sense that he wasn't – you know, just, you know, you just jump onto the scene as a underclassman or anything. So they, you know, it's a pipeline there also. So he played behind some people. Uh, his get off is amazing. His, his get off is pretty much like what you, which, what you would want out of uh, Odafi Owe. Usually one of the first play players off the ball. Like I say, he plays a flat really, uh, really well. And I, and I'm watching film, this is the last thing, and I'll let you talk. Last thing I noticed about this guy is, Tight ends, running backs, four backs. There's no point in blocking this guy on the edge. You're gonna need a big 300. You know, you're gonna need a Ben Cleveland to keep him from uh, disrupting the play. I remember he, they poured the right tackle. Florida State poured the right tackle. They asked, they asked the strong side tight end to uh, cut him off. He basically like arm barred him and uh, got into the uh, the B gap and disrupted the whole play. Um, so he doesn't get bullied, plays well in space. He's a developmental piece. Uh, any production from him in year one would be a win. I expect him to cover right away, actually, Randy. I, I think um, his ability to drop in the defense, I mean, last year we had Judon and then Bowser backing him up on the strong side. So I think this year you'll see Bowser take more of the Judon role, play those snaps. And then Dalen, he, I don't think he's ready for like a full Bowser last year type workload, but I think he'll definitely be asked to, to drop and to set the edge. I mean, yeah, those two things step out. His, his coverage, his change of direction showed up on the, on the cone drills and the shuttle. And also um, the few times, well, he was asked to drop enough to get a good feel that he's going to be pretty darn good in coverage. And uh, I like that you like his physicality. I, I, you get to see it a lot in college with the run games, but yeah, he didn't have any problems with tight ends for sure. Yeah, he's he's going to dominate once he gets like into a weight room. You know, for next year, I could see him absolutely being. They took two edge rushers who their strengths are stopping a run. You know, so everything else is just going to be built on. Like like I said, he's a. Don't get me wrong, the developmental in this in the aspect that you know. He's not – I don't think he's a finished product either, even though, even though he's a little older than Owe. Uh, but I see him playing some – so are you saying you'll see him playing first and second down? 
and rotationally playing on third down. I can see him Maybe. switching series. How many, snaps? How many? Okay. I can see him like, uh, for instance, Bowser takes the first two series, and then Hayes takes the takes the third. That kind of thing. Or if it's a maybe an extended drive, you know, 12 play, 15 play drive, I could see, you know, Dalen coming in and giving them a breather. But also, you know, the Ravens like to mix up their packages. So who knows? It could be they could have Adafi over there. They could have Adafi and McPhee on the field at the same time. Um, You never know. But yeah, the versatility is going to going to help. So obviously he's raw as a pass rusher. We both think his strength and his coverage is going to play sooner than later. But um, do you think there's much upside with his with his uh, pass for us, or do you think he's going to be more of a Bowser type uh, player for us on his first contract? So the film I saw, I think he's going to be a better pass rusher than Bowser. I think uh, for one, Bowser Bowser played a lot of off ball in, in college, right? Bowser played some off ball at Houston. Uh, Hayes didn't play a lot of off ball at, at um off the ball at Notre Dame. So, and I noticed them, I noticed some moves like, just like, Oh, wait, I noticed some hand fighting. He has a nice spin move that he's gone to, uh, to beat guards. He's had success beating guards, uh, and Notre Dame system. So once like, like, Oh, wait, the production isn't there, but I believe he'll be, I, I think he'll be better across the board in the pros. Uh, like I said, he didn't, he, he was, it was a checkered history as far as injuries. So if he can just like start getting some steam, you, you know he's a hard worker. So if he can just get some steam going, you know, you know something clicks, you know he he puts a move or two together. I I think Bowser, I think Bowser isn't the ceiling. I think Bowser can be the floor, and the ceiling can be, you know, eight sacks to go along with his ability to cover and move in space. Well, I tell you what, if that happens, is a fifth round. As a fifth round pick, the Ravens would love that. I mean, they spend a second. I mean, they got, round. You got Judon in the what? The fifth? The fifth round too. Yep. So same same range yeah. there. And uh, of course, uh, Hayes is coming from a big time school. But you know, I, I saw something uh, a couple of months ago. It was like over 150 times that Bowser was asked to drop last year was the most in the NFL by far. So 150 times. So they could ask Bowser to rush more. And who really knows? Um, how Bowser's developed as a pass rusher. You hope he takes small steps, but I think kind of he is what he is right now. But the more pass rush opportunities, the more sacks Bowser's going to have. And I can see Bowser stepping up his sack game because of Hayes this year. Yeah, I I expect the, the players that I believe will lead the um, team of sacks is going to be between Bowser, Owe, and a dark horse I would say Jalen Ferguson, uh, as far as the edge rusher. So, you know, he's going to be ex- he's going to be expected to carry the load. And like Ty's Bowser said, he's he's willing to do it. So, you know, he had five last year. If he if he can just bump that up to if 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 he can bump it up to ten, and you get a you get a good mix from two rookies. You know, maybe six to twelve between the rookies, along with Wink schemes. Then you know, and Wink's going to get these guys a couple sacks. You know, a couple thank you very much sacks, you know. For sure, man. I mean, we were, you know, I think middle of the pack, 39 sacks, something around there last year. And yeah. let's let's face it, like, uh, we weren't getting pressure with our front front four anyway. So going for away and then Dale and Hayes, basically physical players with pass rush upside, I think was a good move for the Ravens because we weren't going to be able to spend and bring in a high-priced pass rusher I mean, yeah. Judon got 14 a year. I think uh, Yannick got 12, 13 a year, something like that. Bowser was only at five a year. So um, a good way to address the problem was to just draft some younger players there at that position. Yeah, definitely a smart move to pay Bowser. I think he, I think he's the youngest. No, maybe a Yannick is his age too, but they're both 25, whereas Judon's turning 29 soon. So... Smart move, get two 20, 21 year olds to fresh legs. Look, they'll have they'll have some issues getting to quarterbacks and we're gonna pull our hair out. Uh you know, it's gonna it's gonna be some games where Wink has to send six, maybe five doesn't get, you know, five gets picked up. And that's what you have, you know, you have 
an all pro cornerback, a Pro Bowl cornerback, you know, some other talent behind those guys. You can sure. put these guys in these situations to pin their hit, ears back and maybe these more athletic guys, some new faces, maybe we'll, you know, get it up to the mid forties. That's I think like a like I said, I think the mid forties is a good number for for these guys. So I wanted to ask you about how he fits in Wink's scheme because you mentioned something I thought was interesting back there. You said that you saw Hayes beating guards often. So could you see Hayes as part of that race car package where we have the four outside linebackers on the field at once um, with one defensive lineman and line him up over guards, any? Strictly off of what I seen on what I saw on film, they should play they should play uh uh I'm sorry, um, Hayes over guards. He had very, he had pretty good success off of spin moves, hand fight, and uh, the stunts that we talked about with Calais, uh, stuff like that, where he's disguised or he's, you know, cutting, like I said, cutting across the face of the guard. Those plays are in our scheme, and he seems like he has a knack for it. Um, those are, I think those plays more come with mental, just like knowing when to go, how to hide your body. You know, that's just more than just like going hit full speed ahead. You're, you know, you're trying to work an angle for a closer. So he had success. He did it against, uh, forgot the team, forgot the team he played, but he, he, he did it. He did one really nice move where he counted outside and spun inside across the guard's face and he got a quarterback hit. And I can see the Ravens using both of these rookies, but especially Adafi on these uh, stunts. You know, we have uh, Campbell and Wolf. They're professionals at it, man. Their technique is just awesome on the front end of those stunts, taking up two bodies and letting those young linebackers scream across, getting the quarterback's face real quick. I'm sure we'll see that. Do you think Hayes will be comfortable on the stunts? I expect once these guys move well in space, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure his his three cone drill wasn't too shabby. Also, uh, the footwork being able to you know not step on your big you know the twin towers toes while you're getting around it. I think if it's Pinnell, you know Pinnell Pinnell coming edge wise or even J Jalen, that's a little more cumbersome. These two guys yeah. are going to he, they're going to be there and they're going to be gone and they're going to be in the quarterback's face. It's like it's like Patrick Queen shooting through the a gap, you know. That's how I think those sacks are going to look. It's going they're going to be a little more vicious because they're going to be faster coming around, coming around big Calais uh, uh, or Brandon or Derek Wolf, mostly Calais and Derek. But there, I think Wink is going to have fun creating. Like I said, these they he's going to get these guys some layup sacks. Yeah, those two guys in particular. I was going to say I think the stunts. I agree with you. I think that they'll be a big part of both rookies' pass rush, uh, especially Hayes who is not going to be able to beat you uh, with speed to the outside. But keeping it simple, you know what I mean? Like, he's quick. He's got great body control. You see that in coverage. So if you can have Derek Wolf or Campbell pick off two guys, let Hayes loop, get in the quarterback's face real quick, that's simple. It doesn't need any – you don't need any refined hands or any of that kind of thing. You don't need real pass rushing moves. You just got to be able to move. So I could definitely see Hayes getting broke in with those stunts. Um, what are your expectations from them, numbers wise, and and that kind of thing? What would you say overall ex expectations of Dale and A's? So I noticed that he didn't play a ton against high. His snap count went down against higher competition. So with that being said, I think he is going to get the full leash. And that's why I said I think he's going to be development. I don't know if he, they're going to throw him right into the fire. Uh, so. Maybe a competition adjustment will be a thing for him. We will see. Uh, like I said, he didn't play a. He lost some snaps again in big games. So that's kind of that's kind of red flag for me. So I could see him. I could see him, like you said, just thirteen or fifteen uh, snaps a game. Maybe that's maybe that's a little too high. Maybe like seven or ten in situations where. More athletic, faster against the Chiefs, for example. You know, where you just want you just want to stack the deck, you know, with more mobile guys to get cut in the passing lanes and you know, Chip Kelsey guys who can move in space. So there will be a place for him because uh, he's he's more he's he's more nimble than uh, Ferguson. Uh, Bowser says he he moves like him. 
Uh, I would say he's probably just as adequate in spaces always. So you got guys who are athletic freaks. I mean, not so much uh, Hayes, but you got guys who can move or nimble. So you just got to find situations where they can be effective. And I think, like I said, going forward, it's going to be in packages where it's third down, you're coming, you're, you're getting help from the all pro, uh, you know, Calais, and you're just wide open for something. Yeah, and as the season goes on, I think both these. Sorry, as the season goes on, I think both these guys will earn it. You know, I don't think the Ravens just give away snaps to rookies. They're gonna have to really take it in training camp. I hear you on that. So, we'll, I mean, based on that, we'll be seeing a lot of Bowser very early on because he's the only other. Him. Yeah, he's the only other real true strong side linebacker we have, and I don't think they want to rush away into that role. We'll see, but I think away is just going to be used for rushing and setting the edge at, at, at the beginning of the season. But, Randy, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to these edge rushers. And uh, you have your Twitter, Twitter handle down at the bottom. I encourage anybody to follow Randy out there. Good Twitter follow. Him and I talk all the time. So, so yeah, be feel free to join us there on Twitter. But thanks again for joining us, guys. Football is family. We'll see you next time. Well, family. Take care, guys. Thank you.